Shalom, shalom, mishpocha. Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings. I'm your host, Rabbi Yehuda ben Shomer, and today I want to talk about misguided obsessions. There is a very dangerous trend within Messianic and Netzari Judaism regarding eschatological prophecy, or in other words, end times prophecy. You have many people that have come out of the church and have come into Messianic or Netzari Judaism, and yet they have not relieved themselves or stripped themselves of the Western um, mindset of the Gentile church. And they try to bring in that thought process, that learning process, that process of hermeneutical interpretation with them regarding prophecy into Messianic and Netzari Judaism, and they end up being way off in regards to prophecy. Um, prophecy is a very, very tricky animal. It's, it's, it's almost like looking at something and calling it a horse when in reality it's a zebra. Or looking at an animal and calling it a horse and it's really a donkey. It may be very close. It may be from the same species or same family or related to, you know, closely related to what you're calling it, but indeed it's something else. It's something more specific, something more broad. Prophecy is, is most accurate, obviously, and seen more clearly in focus in hindsight. Prophecy is not always something that you can study and look at ahead of time and see it 10 years before it comes and say, yep, 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 this is it, this is it, this is definitely it. And then you just wait for it, and boom, it comes to pass, and you were right. Sometimes that happens, but a lot of time, especially dealing with eschatology, that's not the case. Why? Because I grew up in Christianity. I've been a believer since I was a small child, and I've seen the trends regarding prophecy, and I've learned from the mistakes of others, and I know when to back off and when to not address a subject. Many people may wonder why I don't have a lot of videos regarding eschatology and prophecy and Daniel Revelation, because I don't want to tell you or teach you anything until I know for sure and am convinced of myself and what I have discovered and found out and have learned is backed up by the Torah. I'm not going to do it. Prophecy, eschatological prophecy, is really not on my radar screen right now because I'm so focused on making sure I understand the Torah and know what the Torah says and, and I'm able to apply it to my life and to be able to practice it. And I'm very skeptical and very leery of believers who claim to be Torah observant yet put prophecy above the Torah. And I've even heard some people say, you know what, I know that Yeshua was Jewish, and I know that the Torah is still for today, and I know that it's important to understand Jewish history and customs, but I don't have time for that. I don't have time for the Torah. Don't you see? Time is getting short. Don't you see? God has called me to be a watchman on the wall and to shout from the rooftops, to be like Noah and to prepare for the end so the people will be informed. Well, if you're proclaiming this prophecy and it's so important to you, you better make sure what you're saying is right. And if you're shouting this prophecy and the interpretation of it from the rooftops, and yet you don't even uh, have a consideration for the Torah and how it applies to prophecy, you're going you're gonna to find yourself a false prophet. Because you're going to be saying all these things, oh, I've studied it for 30 years. I've studied it for as long as I remember. I know who the Antichrist is, who the beast is, what the seven-handed dragon is, who Mystery Babylon is, and you know what the mark of the beast is, and the false prophet, and I know all this. I've studied it for 30 years. And the Holy Spirit, he, he's, he's revealed it to me. And he's confirmed it in, in my spirit. And you're saying all this, and you've learned all this, and acquired and amassed all this knowledge while you're in Christianity. Well, don't you think there needs to be a shift in your thinking? Don't you think that you may have to reevaluate and relearn what you've been taught and what you believe and what you claim is from the Holy Spirit? Be very careful, people, of putting words in the mouth of the Ruach HaKodesh that he never spoke or never said. The Ruach HaKodesh is never, ever, ever going to tell you or teach you something that's in contradic contradiction or in opposition to the Torah. So what you say regarding prophecy better be able to be backed up by Torah, or it is false, it is wrong, and it is dangerous to teach those things to the people. Because do you want to stand before the Almighty God and say, I've called you to be a watchman on the wall, and you are teaching all this prophecy and, and, and saying all this in my name, but yet it's totally wrong. You've led these people astray. Their blood is on your hands because you've taught them wrong. People who are in leadership position or in, in, in somehow uh, called into the fivefold ministry or as a rabbi or a leader is going to be held more highly accountable on Judgment Day than the average layman. 
because we're teaching and instructing people and they're believing what we say and they're doing what we say so what we say and teach better be true or we're going to lead people astray and their blood is going to be on our hands I'm not having any blood on my hands folks I refuse to that's why I'm very careful about what I say and what I teach and I do my very best to make sure what I say is right and if I'm wrong I come back later and say hey I was mistaken and I say here's why I thought it was this when it was really this but I have to do that very rarely because I do my best to make sure what I'm saying is the truth and my goodness in regards to prophecy don't don't tell me don't come to me and say well brother I'm a prophet and I have a word of, of the Lord for you I've got a prophecy for you that the Holy Spirit gave to me and it contradicts Torah I'm not listening to it or if if you don't obey Torah or if you claim to be Torah observant and haven't observed the feast, if you claim to be Torah observant and don't wear seat seats, and you don't keep Torah and you still eat unkosher, then don't tell me what the Lord told you to tell me because I'm not going to believe it. Because you're going to end up having your foot in your mouth and becoming a false prophet. Because a true prophet is going to know Torah, going to understand Torah, going to live Torah, going to obey Torah, going to walk in the footsteps of Yeshua our Messiah by walking and following the Torah. And whatever prophecy comes out of your mouth is going to be backed up by the Torah. You're going to be able to find it in the Torah. And whatever the Holy Spirit supposedly tells you is going to be backed up by Torah. It's not going to contradict it or uh, subvert it. And what you say to me better line up with the Torah. And it also, the Holy Spirit within me, I better have that positive check in my spirit that what you're saying is right. If not, I'm not, I'm not listening to it. And especially holds true for eschatological prophecy and the interpretation of it. We don't go by Christian hermeneutics, folks. We go by Hebraic hermeneutics, which is parties, paradise, the Peshat level, the literal level, the Remez level, something that is hinted at, the Drash level, the practical or applicable level of Scripture, and the Sod level, the mystical or spiritual. All of them have to line up. All of them have to agree for any given interpretation of any passage to be correct, especially regarding prophecy. Why am I so leery of prophecy? Because back in the 1980s, all I heard is that the Catholic Church is the beast. The Catholic Church is the false prophet. Prince Charles is the Antichrist. The mark of the beast is a microchip. And then everything, it changes, and now I'm hearing that the, the, the mark of the beast is a vaccine. And now I'm hearing that the Antichrist is not Prince Charles, it's this guy, that guy, or it's this new Maitreya guy that's come on the scene. And now that I'm hearing that, no, well, we were wrong. It's not the Catholic Church. That's not the beast. The, 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 the Islam is the beast. Islam is the false prophet. You know, which is it, folks? It, it, it's it's got to be one or the other, or, 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 or they're both wrong. So which is it? And now I'm starting to hear, well, it's actually a hybrid of the Catholic Church and Islam because they're in bed together. Well, you better be able to back up what you say because 20 years ago, People were saying that the Catholic Church is the Antichrist. Now, post 9-11, everybody's saying that, that the Islam is the beast and holds the Antichrist. Okay, which is it? Back in the 1980s, I heard Gog and Magog was China and Russia, China and Russia, China and Russia. And now, Gog and Magog is Iran and Iraq or Pakistan or whatever. Okay, which is it, folks? You know, prophecy is not like medicine to where you say, folks, Go ahead and eat this because it won't give you cancer. And then 10 years later, oops, we were wrong. In our studies over a 10-year period, we discovered this actually does give you cancer, so you can't eat it. Okay, which one is it? It's got to be one or the other. You know? You, you've, you've, got to be, you've got to filter eschatological prophecy through the Torah, or it means nothing. So you may be saying, well, I've been studying prophecy for 30 years, so are you telling me that everything that I say and believe is wrong? Mm. In so many words, probably yes. Well, Rabbi, how can you have the audacity to say you're not even a student of prophecy? Well, I can say that because I know what happened to me. I was a nice Christian. Yeah, I pushed the envelope, and I was kind of a you know my own person in Christianity. But you know what? I had a nice uh, Protestant, free will Baptist, systematic theological house of cards built to where I knew uh, you know I knew what prophecy was, and I knew what this was, and anybody can throw any kind of question at me, and I could answer it because you know I built this systematic theological house of cards from Protestant, free will Baptist Christianity, and it was all nice and pretty. And then one day I was traveling to college. And I felt a million miles away from God. And I said, God, what's the deal? There's got to be more to my life than this. There's got to be more to my walk with you than this. He said, get back to the first century. I didn't totally understand what he meant, but it was my responsibility to take what he told me and discover what it means. And you know what I discovered what it meant? 
I discovered that it meant this little nice pristine house of cards that I built upon the doctrine of men and upon the doctrine of demons that God took that house of cards and with his Holy Spirit with the Ruach HaKodesh, the wind he said and knocked my house of cards away and I had to wipe the slate clean and start all over I had to reevaluate every single thing that I was raised and born and bred and taught regarding my belief and practice of what the scriptures say I had to start from ground zero it's not that I just oh well, one day I'm a Christian next day I'm a Jew no it wasn't like that I had to I had to relearn and reprogram my mind I had to relearn everything I had to reevaluate everything I had to question everything and I had to learn things all over again and learn them from a Hebraic mindset rather than a Christian Gentile mindset Western mindset is it gonna be any different with prophecy if you're serious about being a watchman on the wall, if you're serious about being a student of eschatological prophecy, you're really serious, you will lay it aside until you know Torah. You will lay it aside until you understand Torah and are able to apply it to your life. And once you get a good grasp on Torah, you'll be able to come back to this urge and this yearning and this call of prophecy that God has placed on your life. And you'll be able to take that picture of prophecy and pour it through the filter of Torah and everything that comes out on the other end is going to be pure Torah. It's going to be backed up. It's going to be 100% true. If you're not able to do that, don't be teaching prophecy. If you're not going to be, if you're not able to do that, don't come to me and say, well, brother, I know what this means and that means because I don't want to hear it. If it's not backed up by Torah, the foundation, I don't want anything to do with it. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be crass or nasty or smart alecky or, or anything. I'm just trying to bring across to you how serious end time prophecy is. That it's not something to be handled lightly. And people have their obsessions with, with prophecy and with the end times and with the NWO and with the Illuminati and with the beast and the mark of the beast and the false prophet and the, the whore of Babylon and mystery Babylon and what this thunder meant and what this scroll said. And they're obsessed with it. And, and they, 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 they're, they're online almost all day long studying this stuff and they don't give a, a, a wink regarding Torah. You better pick up that Torah and know it front and back to be able to pour prophecy through it. Because if you don't, then everything that you believe and everything that you teach is wrong. It's false. It's not going to add up. It's not going to stand the scrutiny of Torah and Hebraic hermeneutics. And then you're going to end up pe teaching people wrong. That's why I'm kind of holding back on teaching about Daniel and Revelation and all this kind of stuff because I want to know that I know that I know for sure so that I'm not teaching you something false or just ridiculous or that I'm not going back to this Christian Western mindset and applying it another thing that happens is people watch Fox News and CBS News and CNN and and World Net Daily and all this kind of stuff and they try to take what's happening in the here and now and apply it to Bible prophecy that was written 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 years ago and trying to say, oh, well, this is happening today and this is it was spoken about by Isaiah or this was so spoken about by Daniel or what have you. And, and, and you're trying, and see, that's, that's why people said the Catholic Church was the beast, why a microchip was the mark of the beast way back in the 80s because they were taking, the. that's why they said that Gog and Magog was China and Russia because they were taking the political worldview at that day and time back in the 1980s, the Cold War with Russia and the threat of nuclear war and all that and they're trying to apply it to the prophecies found in Daniel and Revelation and oh, lo and behold times have changed, the political atmosphere and theaters of the world have changed and now we're here post 9-11 and we're saying oh well actually Gog and Magog is Iran and Iraq, oh, oh actually the beast is really Islam Okay, which is it? How come you changed your tune? If that was true back then, shouldn't it be true today? How come you're changing? How you know? Stick with your guns. How come you're changing your stripes? You know, I mean, prophecy is like a fuzzy picture. That when you look at it and you squint your eyes, and you're like, well, I, I, that's a, that's a teddy bear. I think that's a teddy bear. And then all of a sudden, the picture comes in focus a little bit. No, 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 no. I was wrong. It, oh, it's a Saint Bernard. And then it comes into more folks. Oh, well, lo and behold, it's not a St. Bernard and it's not a teddy bear. It's really a lamb. That's not the way you want to deal with eschatological prophecy. You want to wait until it's clearly in focus and, and that it's filtered through the Torah and that you know that you know that you know before you open your mouth and say, well, Revelation means this and Daniel means that. So, please, I just pray that you're taking this video in the right frame of mind and the right spirit and seriously 
consider reevaluating what you believe in why regarding prophecy and how it how a Torah applies to it because it's very important because we don't want to be labeled some cult group we don't want to be labeled some you know wackos out there that are saying that uh, you know this is what revelation and Daniel means and it doesn't mean that at all we need to know for sure that we know that we know that we know I love you guys and if it, and if I didn't love you I wouldn't tell you the truth and if I didn't love you I wouldn't make this video and if I didn't love you I wouldn't be a little rough with you it's tough love I don't mean to be smart alecky or crass or anything like that so I hope you take this in, in, the, in the spirit of urgency and love that it was intended. Thank you so much for watching. Shalom and Shavuot Bye-bye.